All right, in this test video, I'm going to test the RTX 3070's ability to render an EV. And I'm going to do it by doing a drag race between the 2060 Super that's right here and the 3070 that's right here. Both of them are using EV. Both of them are set to 64 samples. And the 2060 Super is assigned to this instance and the 3070 is assigned to this instance. Uh, here are the stats for the 3070 and here are the stats for the uh, 2060 Super. Just in case you want to look at that stuff. Alright now I do need to point out that the 3070 that right here is also running the displays so it will have a little bit of a penalty because of it. Now both the GPUs are in a uh, 16x slot but they're only running 8 lanes at 3.0 speeds so it's basically the same bandwidth as if you was running SLI or something like that even though it has nothing to do with SLI alright now let me go ahead and get this started both of them are 50 frames we're just gonna see how which one does it quicker and how much quicker I'm going to go ahead and start this one first and then I'm as quick as I can I'm going to come over to to this one and start it render animation render animation all right it it take a probably a few seconds for it to start but once it starts it should pick up speed like four frames into it and of course the 3070 is already pulling ahead slightly now keep in mind uh, a lot of this is uh, CPU intensive too especially the initial part of setting that up so Probably a better way to test this would be if I had two computers side by side with the same specs except one using the 3070 and one using the 2060 Super. Or I could do this in post, you know, combine it in post and render each one by itself. But this is just an example. But you can see over here the 2060 Super is taking seven and a half seconds a frame. And uh, the 3070 is taking roughly 6.6 .6 seconds. So it is quicker. It's not drastically quicker. But you gotta keep in mind, the 2060 Super, the only thing it's doing is um, basically rendering. The 3070 Super, which is actually rendering faster, it's running the displays plus it's running my screen capture. So yeah, it's impressive that it can do all that and still be quicker. But to tell you the truth, I actually thought it'd be a little bit quicker Because, see, even halfway through it, there's not a huge gap. But then again, you know, like I said, the whole screen and screen capture thing. So, yeah. And, but look at the temperatures. 45C, 42C, 53. I have never seen that... Um, 3070 get up uh, to a high temperature yet. Of course, it has three fans and has that big old huge heat sink on it. I mean, it's like two and a half uh, slots wide. That's how thick the GPU is. I couldn't imagine putting uh, 
thirty ninety in that case, because not only is it thick, it's tall and long. It's just a huge card. Now, I didn't want to fast forward through all this, you know, just show it in real time. You can always fast forward on YouTube if you get bored of watching this. See, look at the fan speed on uh, the 3070. It's completely turning off every once in a while. Which doesn't surprise me, being that the card is running so cool. Now, unfortunately, on the 2060 Super, at least on the Founders Edition that I have here, uh, the minimum fan speed is 41%. It does not turn off which is why but it's it's staying rock solid at 41 percent at the minimum but both cards hovering in the mid 50, mid 40s to low 50s something like that temperatures are good of course ev doesn't use a whole lot of uh gpu power it's because the only time the gpu is being used is when these during these peaks And then the rest of the time, it's mostly just um, the CPU transferring or preparing the scene and then all the data being sent to the GPU. Now, I'm going to do a little bit another test after this to make it more obvious. I'll turn up the number of uh, render samples to a high number and then render one frame at a time one frame with each one that way we can see uh, the difference all right one more frame and the 3070s done all right 3070s done and the 3060s still got five more frames to go i think it would probably been this would pr the 3070 would probably been about 10 frames ahead without the screen capture and without running the monitors and so forth. But just for testing here, I'm going to turn this up to an absurdly high number in terms of uh, EV. I'm just going to set it to 10,000. All right. And this, the 3060 Super is done. I'm going to turn this up to 10,000. All right, now I'm going to, on the 3060 Super, I'm just going to click Render Image, and we'll, we'll see how long it takes to render uh, at 10,000 samples with the 2060. And then when it's done, we'll do the same thing to the uh, 3070. Now, I'm going, I'm going to assume it's going to take about a minute for the 2060 Super, I'm not 100% sure, I'm just kind of guessing. But I don't really have a good guess for the uh, 3070. The 2060 Supers I've been using for uh, over a year now, so I'm pretty familiar with them. The 3070s, literally I just installed it in the computer uh, Friday. and I have, I've been using it for less than two days. But look at the power draw on uh, the 2060 Super, 146 watts. Eighty-three percent TDP. Eighteen hundred ninety megahertz. And these are not exactly simple scenes. They're not very complex. They have like 2.2 million faces, I believe, if I remember correctly. Everything in here in this scene I've created myself except for the BMW. 
the BMW I got from uh, you know the blender benchmark but this is the scene I use for my own um, benchmarks it's actually taken longer than I thought it was going to for the 2060 super and I I would say I hope it hadn't crashed but I can look down here and see it hadn't crashed it's just taken a long time of course realistically who would render at 10,000 samples in EV because once you get past 64 samples for the most part depending on scene but for the most part you don't have any you don't get any better results by going over 64 samples I remember back when EV was uh, you know still in the experimental stage it had a progress bar for the actual uh, uh, to show you how far it was along in each frame but they done away with that I'm not exactly sure why Oh, come on 2060 you can do it if it doesn't finish within the next minute I'm going to go ahead and stop it and then just set it to like a thousand or something like that because it's already been what about two minutes maybe three so it's definitely taking longer than I thought it was going to take. But I always have this feeling whenever I go to stop something, especially like this, that a split second after I would have stopped it, it would have been finished. So I hate that. You can see the temperature went up to 68C, which is still not bad at all. But that's pretty much expected considering you're using a, nearly 150 watts. I don't know how long this is going to take, so I think it may have crashed. It's hard to say. Yeah, I think it crashed on me. All right, let me reopen this up. Uh, open this one. Come on. All right, of course, I have, we got to resize this. It doesn't have a memory like most windows. All right, I'm going to set it to 1,000 this time. I'm going to go ahead and click render once with its the sample set low. That way, I can make sure the textures are all loaded into memory. And let me downsize this. Let's change this to 1000. All right, let's give this one more go. Render image. And again, this is the 2060 Super. Hopefully this one won't linger on and make me look 
silly for the next two or three minutes. This feels like one of those Jeopardy moments. I hear that tune playing in, in the background. Da, 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 da. All right, 50 seconds is what it took the 2060 Super to render at 1,000 samples in this scene. So let me go ahead and try this with the 20, or pardon me, with the 3070. Now, I'm expecting this to be quicker, but how much quicker is kind of hard to say. I'm going to guess based on the other test I did, maybe 35 to 40 seconds. But I'm not 100% sure by no stretch of the imagination. Yeah, 36 0.9 seconds basically 37 seconds versus 50 seconds to do 1,000 samples now again if this was like the not being used to run the screen capture it would probably uh, be quicker I tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to click stop on the screen capture and I'm going to render this and then whenever it's done, I'm going to turn the screen capture back on. That way we can see if there's any improvement over the 36 seconds. All right, I'm going to stop now. All right, it just finished, and it, did, it was quicker. It dropped by about three seconds by turning the screen capture off. So realistically speaking, this is more representative of the difference. 50 seconds versus 34 seconds. So you're saving about 16 seconds per frame at 1,000 samples, which, you know, that's significant, but it's not, it's not spectacular. But I guess that's it. I'm going to do more tests of this GPU later on, and most of my tests will be in regards, will be using cycles, because almost everything I render is in cycles anyway. But I guess that's it. Later, people.